Hello, welcome to Frozen Frontiers. This is a video about inverters, specifically paralleling inverters. Um, a couple mistakes that I made. And yeah, just general electrical stuff and a little bit more of my shed, as you can see. We'll go over it all. Welcome to Frozen Frontiers. Hey guys, so this is a little bit of a mess. Um, I just need to move a couple things, get it cleaned up, and it's mostly just I put the new inverter here in, so now I'm running two inverters. I think I just got it all figured out, that's why the panels are still off, I need to put those back on. Um, but so with these inverters, it's actually pretty easy to do it once you know what you're doing. So if you're only running two, there's this little teeny pad right there that on both of them, needs to be straight up both of them and then you just need to run an ethernet cable from slot one i'm going to call this one slot one even though it's slot three this is for the battery connection these are for the parallel so you run it from slot one you know i'm going to switch my wording slot one down here to slot two and then slot one back to slot two this wiring is different when you have more than two of these in a row. Basically, it goes two to one, two to one, two to one, and then two all the way back to one if you have more than two of these. So it's kind of nice. Um, it does grab the battery information from this inverter and sends it through these lines, which is very, very nice because if it didn't, <laughs> then I would have to have another cable for this to go into the batteries. And I had to special make the cable that goes from the batteries into here. Um, if anybody runs up against that problem with these inverters or these batteries specifically, let me know. I have a diagram that shows what pins you need to put in. Um, I tried to get the two wire start generator thing working and I haven't figured it out yet, but basically there's settings on here. You need to set it's setting 21 it needs to be set to phase one. I'm not sure if it's different from more multiple other than two, if it's you do phase three on that or not, but this one was phase one on both, both of them being straight up. One thing to be aware of while you're doing that is whichever one powers up first will be set as the host. In this case, we can check by going down three. So this one here, one PH. That means that this one is the host. If we come down here. This one says 1PS, this one is a slave, which isn't technically proper. The documentation says that the host should have the PV lines in it if you can't balance it between the two. So I might pull one of those sets of PV lines out and move them up top just so that they're balanced. The generator lines should be connected into both generators as well, but I don't have the breaker for that. <laughs> the breaker panel for that yet so i'm just gonna have to run this way hope it doesn't break anything but then basically you come over here this is where our loads are there's the kitten missed your boy you gonna come out and find the mouse that's been wandering around in here betty yeah you gonna get him i hope you do kiddo um but yeah you come over here and to the untrained eye everything looks fine but to the trained eye, you might notice these two red lines go into opposite banks. So bank one, bank two, bank one, bank two. The reason that these are tied up to the same one is because they are not connected to the same output over here. So this is the load output, L1 and L2. You can see that's black for L1 and red for L2 here. You come down to this inverter and we've got red on L1 and black on L2. The problem that I was running into is once I would switch both of these on, 
it would trip the breaker because we've got black on L1, red on L2, and we had black on L1 and red on L2. Because it's not hooked up the right way on the other side, I had to switch these two. And I can fix that by just going into the inverter and doing that, but it was easier to do it here. So I just did it here. Um, then it's fine. You can already see that the load here, so we've got 110 kilo or 110 watts being used there. And Forty watts being used here, so it is distributing the load. Um, I could test that even better by turning on this little tiny heater that I've got right here. So let's plug this guy in. Get that out of the way. So the heater's going. Let's see what the load looks like now. Got 110 or 100 watts there, and. It'll switch over in a second here. My hands are not steady. Only 40 watts there, that's cool. So it didn't really change much. Just kind of interesting because it should have. It's like a 250 watt little heater. It's been keeping this room warm so far. I'm definitely gonna need to upgrade it. But that'll be another day. This is the, so I've got a little temperature thing. That'll tell me what temperature it is. And then it'll turn on at the temperature that's in the top right. And it'll turn back off at the temperature in the bottom right. So what I do is I'd basically just bring this. This is the actual temperature sensor. I just bring it up by the batteries and just set it here. Then it's getting the temperature that's up by the batteries up to certain degrees. These batteries can discharge down to minus 20 Celsius, which is like minus four, but they can only charge if you're at zero C or 32 Fahrenheit. So if I need to charge them at all, I need to keep them above freezing. So that's what I'm trying to do with this uh, little contraption here. Um, I did do some of my spray in insulation over here and it, it turned out pretty good. I accidentally dropped a uh, board on it while it was hardening. So I need to fill that in with a little gap filler. But then I just need to get the thing built around here and down. I've got a uh, hot patch on it for now. And another temperature sensor that turns on if it gets too cold. Um, but then I also did some of the blow-in insulation here too. And this was kind of like, you know, first attempt, so some of it is all super gooey, but it's, um, it turned out pretty good. It's a little bit less rigid than the stuff that was put inside, but it's way cheaper. It's like a third of the price. So for the same, almost the same R value, this stuff I think is like 6.5 per inch. The stuff that I have in my house is 7.7. .7. So it's a little bit better. Um, anyway, back to over here. So now, the reason that I wanted to get this put in is if I've already run into a couple times where I've just, you know, had the water heater turn on and the well pump, which that right there is three and a half thousand watts. And these can support 6,000 watts. So if I've got those on and then something else pumps on, like, I don't know, the pellet stove or a griddle or my computer being on running a bunch of power through it it'll take one of these legs over the 3000 mark and as soon as it does that it trips the whole thing so i am hoping that this will avoid that and i need to run a bunch of stuff and test it but i'll get that done at another time but um yeah i've got all my documentation back behind here and I really do need to clean some stuff up. I always have to remember to put this away and this because these tools are the tools I have used by far the most out here. So let's put those away. And then when I'm done for the day, 
I just close these doors. Oh yeah, I put these doors on. They're pretty cool. Close these doors. I don't have uh, door handles for them yet, so I just use the plug that came with it. And just shove it into the hole as good as I can. There we go. And then I just take a bit of insulation, shove it into the door there. Prevents the cold from coming in and the heat from going out. Let's move this wire away from that a little bit there. There we go. And then I've got a camera hooked up here pointing straight at it so that I can check the temperature at any given moment. It's pretty nice. So even just with that one door closed, it's already gone up. You can't really see it. Two degrees. That also might have been me handling that thing there, but... You know, I'm gonna move this. I had it right here, and I think I like that more. Cause that gets kind of right below the batteries, and it's also not next to the batteries, which are generating heat when they're discharging or charging. So I also have a router out here, cause mine didn't really run out here very well. And I'm using uh, these power ethernet adapters that basically just send your internet signal through your power lines. Um, I can't say how well they actually work if you're looking for performance, but every time I've come to check the camera, it's been fine. So, and the streaming through it seems like it's fine. Haven't had issues with it disconnecting my other hardware out here, these two. I should really put the panels on those. It'll make it look a lot better. I'll do that. Anyway, just wanted to come at you with a video. So hope that uh, everything in your neck of the woods is going good. Wherever you're at, things are going here. We had the first snow yesterday. That was really pretty. Um, I'll post some pictures here so that y'all can see. I actually think I took some videos, so I'll just post those too. I took a video of when I woke up. Um, I also took a video up my front door so i'll get those posted here too so you can see that uh it just changes around here so much how everything looks because right now it's getting to the point that all the leaves are gone from all the trees and nothing really looks that great as you can see all the trees just have no leaves on them you can see basically straight through everything so the snow comes down and blocks off that view a bit and get some really good looking stuff. Now that I've got the other inverter hooked up, I can work on getting this generator hooked up too, just in case the backup generator. But that'll be another breaker panel that I need to get installed, so I'll do that a little bit later. Oh, there's Mr. Kitten over there in the trees. <laughs> I'm so blind without my glasses. But anyway, yeah, wherever you're at, hope you're having a good time and being as productive as you want to be. So we will catch you another time. Have a good one.